Hi folks. Well, I'm a bit late to the game, but um, everyone else seems to be talking about Arduino stuff, so I thought it was finally time I got round and ordered myself some. So, I got a bunch of these ones. They're about £1.50 a piece on the internet. £1.43, I think, I paid for them. Um, little clone Arduino Pro Minis. And um, I'll show you what I've been up to and what my current problem is and how I'm going to solve it. So this is one of these Pro Mini things and it's absolutely tiny, um, little Atmel processor in the middle, bunch of input output pins on it and a reset button and it's got an LED on there somewhere and that's it. So I thought as a first project I'd actually teach my children a bit about electronics and programming, teach them how to solder. I've got two kids, one aged nine and one aged six and um, my six year old always wants someone to time how long it takes to brush his teeth because you're supposed to brush for two minutes each time you brush. And he's forever asking, so I thought, good project, we'll build some toothbrush timers. So I gave the children the challenge and uh, let them choose their own colours of LEDs. My daughter decided she wanted three LEDs, a red, a green and a yellow. And my son decided he wanted four LEDs, but I said they can have up to four LEDs, a push button and a loudspeaker. And, you know, I'd help teach them how to solder and put it together and then I could help them write the programme. But we're starting from just a single flashing LED, which is about the simplest thing you can do with a microcontroller. So, very easy, basic beginner's project. Now, because I've been working on it while the kids have been asleep, my son's toothbrush timer is actually uh, mostly complete now. And I'll, I've rigged the timing on this, so instead of doing two minutes, this is going to do a total of 40 seconds. Um, we've got it hooked up to the PC for power. And when I press the button, you can see we get the lights flashing in sequence and then after five seconds we get a single beep 10 seconds we'll get two beeps after 15 seconds three beeps after a minute a low tone beep and so on and so forth and eventually when we get to what would be two minutes if I had this set right on the timings we'll play a little tune to indicate it's time to finish brushing your teeth now this all worked very successfully and this was destined to live inside this plastic ball that I've um, melted some holes in with a soldering iron for the lights and the reason this switch has got a plastic circle around it that'll sit at the top of this and when you press the button it'll start the timer going and that all worked okay but the problem with this is it needs power and um, there's no way of turning it off and it needs five volts of power so I can't just hook it onto a battery or two and you know if it's got an on off switch they'll forget to turn it off and the batteries will be dead so I need some way of powering off this Arduino and I've seen loads of systems with just one button on that does the power on, the power off and a bunch of functions so I knew it must be possible so I set about working out exactly how to do this. So what we're going to have going on, we're going to have a bunch of batteries which send the power to a voltage regulator which knocks it down to 5 volts and powers the Arduino and that Arduino needs a way of ensuring the power stays on and um, a way of turning it off again and a way that a push button can switch it all on and switch it all off. Well let's start off with the circuit diagram. So what we've got coming in is we've got power from the batteries plus and minus and we're going to need a way of switching the power before it goes to the voltage regulator. So this here is our some form of transistor that switches the power on and off. That's our voltage regulator giving us 5 volts out there. And then somewhere over here we've got our microcontroller, which looks... Yes, it looks kind of like a light bulb. Right, so please forgive my crudely redrawn diagram. I can't draw the symbol for a P-channel FET. It's got lots of squiggly lines on it and I just can't be bothered to get it right really. But this is the circuit we've got on the breadboard here. We've got power coming in from the power supply feeding this with about 9 volts at the moment, just for the sake of it. Power going out to our voltage regulator and I've just got it running a single LED to put a bit of current on it. And we've got our P-channel field effect transistor in the middle. We've got our gate on that leg, our source on that leg and our drain in the middle leg. And the way this P-channel FET works is if we take off the field that's built up on the gate then the light comes on and if we re-energise the gate, 
then the light goes off. That's all it does, down to ground, light comes on, up to positive, the light goes off. So that controls the power going through to the voltage regulator, switches it on and off. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure this thing always defaults to being off. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a very high value resistor into this circuit to make sure that all else being equal, this thing switches off. So let's put it in here. We're going to add one mega ohm and tie that up to positive. So let's drop this in place. One meg resistor tied to positive. So as you can see our LED is off and now if I pull our gate down to ground the light comes on but it goes off straight away again. So this wire that I'm doing is effectively our push button to turn the power on and off. Um, at the moment when the, power's, when the button's pushed down the power's on and as soon as you let go of the button the power goes off. But of course we actually need you know, half a second or so of the power being on for our microprocessor to start up. So I'm just going to add a little capacitor in here which will ensure that we get half a second or so after the power's pushed. Um, so the theory, yeah, there we go. So now if I just hit the power on, we stay on for, I don't know, a quarter of a second or so. It's not quite instant switching off. And that should be enough time for our microprocessor to power up and send a control signal to keep this thing switched on. Of course, we need to add some more circuitry for that. So what we're going to add in is an NPN transistor. And this will be capable... Let's just draw a few more details in here. So at the moment, we've got our switch here going down to ground and that's taking the place of my brown piece of wire, that is that switch. We need to add a way for the microprocessor to keep the power switched on. So this is where our second transistor comes in. Um, how does that look? Again, can't draw transistor symbols. Let's pretend it looks like that. This is an NPN bipolar transistor. And because we have to have a current limit on our base, we're going to add in a 4.7k resistor in there and this signal will go off to the microprocessor and the microprocessor can hold this line high and that will keep that transistor energized that transistor being energized will keep the gate connected to ground the gate connected to ground will keep the power switched on so this is how the microprocessor will keep the power switched on so I'll just build that and we'll come right back OK, so we've added this little NPN transistor now. And um, so this is our signal from the microprocessor that says, hey, keep the power switched on. And to test it out, I'm going to hook it to the power out of our voltage regulator. So I'll just hold that there. And as you can see, that in itself, nothing actually switches on until we press the push button. And that switches the power on. And now the microprocessor is keeping the power switched on. But if we pull that signal low and let the microprocessor switch off, power goes off. Now that signal will only work as long as the power's on. So now to switch it back on, we need to hit that one again. So that gets us, our microprocessor, the ability to keep the power switched on. Now the last thing we need is a way for the microprocessor to read the state of this button. And what we're going to do is we're going to use something built into these Arduinos, which they've got an internal pull-up resistor. Um, so what we can actually do is we can take a diode here. Off to this common point here. And this will be connected to a pin on the Arduino processor. I'll just call it P0 for now. And this will be pulled up high, and then when this switch is closed, that voltage will drop low, and we'll be able to read that from the processor. So I just need to add in this diode into the circuit, and we'll be in business. I've already actually made this onto a bit of breadboard, everything but the switch and the diode, because um, 
I need to take to pieces my son's toothbrush timer to actually complete this circuit. So I'm going to move off the breadboard and finish this off now. So I've connected all the bits together and I've made a bit of a schoolboy error on this. Um, it works, it turns the power on and off, but my mistake was thinking I'd get away with one diode in here. And of course, when this transistor switched on, this point is basically connected to ground, so this input is always reading zero. So I need to add another diode into this circuit. So I'm going to have to rebuild it again on a slightly bigger bit of strip board this time to make room for it. Back in a minute. Okay folks, so here's version 3 of this for me. Um, slightly longer board, but it actually fits all the components in and I've got my second diode. And I've redrawn this circuit diagram to hopefully clarify what works and how it goes on. So um, we'll just start things going. I've increased the size of this capacitor to 2.2 microfarads because um, it wasn't staying switched on long enough for the Arduino to boot up. I forgot that there's a timeout listening on the serial port before this thing actually boots. So I needed the power to stay on for about two seconds and a 2.2 microfarad capacitor and a 1 meg resistor does the trick on that. Um, this was all okay. Here's where I've added the extra diodes and just to try and clarify what's going on here. So we've got the switch acting as a pull down whenever the switch is closed and it'll pull down both this 12 volt or so input rail and also the 5 volt from the microcontroller both at the same time whenever you push the switch. But the 12 volt from the, micro from the power supply can't overload the inputs on the microcontroller because we've got a diode to protect it there but that means the switch acts as a pull down on both of those so I can press the switch to turn it on and also if I hold down the switch for a couple of seconds we've got an abort feature so we drop out of our program and two seconds later the power goes off and in this power off state I have tried to measure it but my multimeter doesn't go down below um, 0.1 of a microamp and I think we're using about 0.1 of a microamp which will just be leakage inside this electrolytic capacitor and a small amount of leakage in that FET, but that's close enough to zero. But um, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to assemble all of this inside this green ball along with some batteries, and um, my son will be able to time his own two minutes for brushing his teeth tonight. So I've just put a bit of uh, Kapton insulation tape on a few places and uh, sandwiched them together between bits of this packing foam stuff that that USB microscope came in. Uh, handy reuse. And now I'm going to stuff it all inside this green ball along with some bits of foam to keep it all squidgy. Well, I hope that made sense to someone out there and um, hopefully someone will find that useful. Um, as always, thanks for watching folks and um, see you next time. Cheers! <laughs>